Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We are here to continue our VR system builds and today we're going to look at the $2,500 system build. Obviously this is our highest end. This is not the highest end system you could build for VR, but it is our highest end uh, for our initial round of VR builds. Now obviously with this uh, you can go all kinds of different areas. We actually started with uh, moving to the X99 platform. So we have a Asus X99A motherboard and we have the Intel Core i7-5930K processor. This is an unlocked CPU. It's six cores, 12 threads. Uh, it is a 3.5 gigahertz to 3.7 gigahertz clock speed. So it's, you know, it's not as high as uh, the latest Skylake parts in terms of single threaded performance, but in terms of multi-threaded performance, this is gonna be a better performer uh, in, than that. It's 140 watt TDP, so we have to be careful in terms of cooling, much more than we have used in other processors. Uh, just for quad channel memory, all that stuff that obviously you guys know of. We could have gone with the 5960X, that's a thousand dollar part. This is a $570 CPU, much more reasonable, I think, uh, for a starting point into the X99 platform. If you look at the motherboard, we have the Asus X99A, the updated version that has the USB 3.1 support on it, which is nice. It's a $235 or so motherboard, so pretty reasonable in the world of X99 products. Eight SATA ports, uh, you have a 32 gigabit per second M.2 port, PCIe, NVMe supported, obviously. Four front USB 3.0, you have two USB 3.1 rear connections as well, so if you, uh, get into the world of uh, external accessories or external storage, you're gonna have uh, the capability for high performance there. Intel LAN on that motherboard, it supports three-way Crossfire and SLI. So if you wanna get into the world of multi-GPU, you can actually do that without much issue. Has a fantastic UEFI BIOS implementation. So if you like to get in there and tweak things, do overclocking, uh, that motherboard's gonna be a fantastic option for you there. Now to pair with the processor and the motherboard, we have memory. Uh, we're gonna use Corsair Dominator Pro modules here. We have DDR4, 3000 megahertz, three gigahertz memory, 16 gigs worth, four, four gigabyte modules uh, to saturate or to fill all four of the memory channels the processor allows. 200 bucks for that memory. It's a little bit steep, not gonna lie to you, uh, but just think that you're getting 16 gigs of system memory in this build and uh, I think you'll be impressed. Now the most important part for our VR builds is obviously still going to be the graphics card. The best performing single GPU you can buy today is the GeForce GTX 980 Ti. Uh, I went with the Asus Strix model of this. It's got a, a, a beefy cooler on it. It's got support in it for kind of PCB strength. They call it a GPU fortifier and a backplate keeps the card um, rigid in the slot. So you don't have to worry about it bending over time because of the weight of the heatsink. Uh, the heatsink has three fans on it. They run fairly quiet as well. Hence the Strix brand is supposed to be an owl. Um, they call it a zero DB fan actually. So when you're not actually gaming, if you're just in windows or even very low gaming uh, loads, it will actually not spin the fans at all. This is a $659 GPU as of the time we record this, very high performance. Another option if you're interested uh, is EVGA has two models of the 980 Ti VR edition. Uh, this is the one that uses the standard stock cooler. It actually has an HDMI port on the back, on the inside of the system, not on the connectors. It, well, it does have one on the front panel connectors, but it also has one that goes back into the inside uh, that allows you to connect this five and a quarter inch bay panel to your system and you can have two more USB front 3.0 ports and a front HDMI port, which is handy if you're going to be swapping HDMI cables for different headsets or you just want to disconnect it and put it away when you're not actually gaming in VR. So that's a nice little uh, add-on and optional extra that EVGA has for you. You are going to pay a little bit more for that, probably $50 more than even this card, $40 or $50 more uh, to get that, that little addition. So keep that in mind. For storage, if you're going to spend $2,500 on a system, you might as well get pretty much the best storage around. And that is the Samsung 950 Pro uh, M.2 based storage device here. This is the 512 gigabyte model. Yes, 512 gigs on this tiny little thumb stick or you know, gum stick, whatever you want to call it, size thing here. Uh, we're talking read speeds at over 2,500 megabytes per second, write speeds at 1,500 megabytes per second, and with a 512 gig drive, you should have more than enough room for pretty much all the games you'll be actively playing at any, any one time, right? Whatever, you know, if you're talking 30 to 50 gig downloads for 10 plus games for uh, that particular drive. Now, you should still have other storage. Uh, Western Digital Red 
uh, four terabyte drives. We have them here priced at about 150 bucks or so. You can get one of them if you're comfortable with that. You can get two if you want to do RAID 1, so you have a little bit of redundancy there. Uh, you can use that to store other games that you're not playing actively. You know, do your phone backups, pictures, videos, whatever anything else you need to store uh, that doesn't need to be super fast, you can go ahead and keep on uh, that WD Red Drive. Uh, if we look at the rest of the components, we've got our power supply down there. We chose a Corsair uh, 750 watt power supply. It's a 750i uh, Platinum. So Platinum means it's going to be very efficient. Uh, you don't have to worry about um, it, it's going to run very cool. It's going to it doesn't even really fin the span fin the spin the fans rather uh, until you get up to probably 30, 40, 50 percent workload. So it's going to be very quiet as well. Um, and the efficiency just means that the components componentry in there is a little bit better. It should last a little bit longer, and that's more than enough for a single 980 Ti. And it's enough for two 980 Ti's as well. So if you're, if you're looking to add multi-GPU later, that should have uh, the connectors and the power headroom for you. In terms of the CPU cooler, we did mention this is a 140 watt processor. We're using the Corsair H100i GTX, which I think is going to be name changed into the Corsair H100i V2, but it's essentially the same, the same product. It is a 240 millimeter self-contained water cooler, um, easy to install, uh, no headaches. It's going to have more than enough performance for base speeds as well as overclocking capability and I think it looks cool as well. PDWM fans will help keep noise levels low uh, in the grand scheme of things as well. And then finally for the case we went with another Corsair product. This is the Corsair 600C chassis. It's a full-size ATX case but the first thing you'll notice when a system is built in it is it's actually inverted right so the the clear panel door is actually on the right hand side as you look at the case as opposed to the left hand side because all the components are rotated 180 degrees. Uh, it has a huge window on the side, kind of like, basically the biggest window you can have on a, on a case this size uh, and still have some bezel for it to actually attach to the rest of the componentry. Um, it has really, really good airflow. It comes with a couple of case fans in there that are, uh, that are good and quiet as well. The doors open up kind of suicide style, so they open up like suicide doors, but those doors also will come off easily, um, so you can completely remove them if you want. And it has filters on all the intakes, and I just really like the way it looks. Cases are obviously about personal preference. What do you think looks good? Do you like more of the square design? Do you like the angular design? Do you need a lot of LEDs and flashy stuff in there? Uh, this case is just $149, actually, so um, it's a pretty good deal, I think, for the amount of features and capabilities that it has. Um, and so that kind of rounds Rounds out our total system cost as of recording is $2,548, $2,548. So pretty close, I think, to our to our target. I know we're going to have questions about um, using a 980 Ti when we know about future GPUs coming out. That's always going to be the case. If you're really really concerned about that, you might build this out, go with the GTX 970 or a Radeon part uh, of equivalent performance, um, and kind of like save some money for the new GPUs that are going to come out late summer, maybe early fall. But I think uh, if you're going to build this system and you're ready for VR today, get the best card you can, the 980 Ti, either this Asus Strix option or maybe even the EVGA uh, VR editions and you're going to have a hell of a VR ready system. I don't think you'll have any problems with any games. So up next, let's put this whole thing together and see what it looks like and do a quick performance check as well. Installing the giant Core i7-5930K processor is similar to any recent Intel platform, but with dual retention arms as part of the LGA 2011 socket. We fill four of eight available memory slots with Corsair Dominator Pro DDR4 memory. Our M.2 950 Pro SSD from Samsung affixes directly to the motherboard below the second full-size PCIe slot. We then screw down the motherboard combination into the Corsair 600C case. The hard drive mounts into a toolless drive bay on the back, and then we begin the process of installing the H100 V2 CPU water cooler and radiator. Finally, we slide in the ASUS 980Ti Strix GPU, run the power and data cables, and there you have it, our high-end VR system is built. With a target price of $2,500 and an actual realized price of $2,519, we got really close to our budget on this particular system build. It's a pricey system, there's no getting around that, uh, but it's more than just an excellent VR system. It's actually good for pretty much all PC gaming. If you wanted to go into high-res monitors, 
maybe even 4K gaming, this system is going to be able to handle essentially any and everything that you really want to throw at it. Uh, building inside the 600C was actually pretty interesting. It's, it's unique in its 180 degree rotation and it's flipped to the other side of the case, uh, but the construction process is essentially identical to any other case that you may have built in. Uh, it's just you, uh, it's mirrored a little bit, so it's a little bit confusing at first, but you still have plenty of room to work inside. Uh, there's plenty of room for cabling, there's plenty of room to install our big uh, air or water cooler that we did for the processor. And with all the storage being stored on the back, like the hard drives and SSD trays, it opens up a lot of area inside and this giant window really lets you kind of show off uh, the hardware that you have in there. Now there's no problems with performance. Obviously we ran this through uh, our 3 d Mark test. 3 d Mark uh, Firestrike Extreme was, this system was 70% faster than our $900 build and 35% faster than our $1,500 build. So clearly this is far and away the, the best performing uh, system we've built for our spring VR guides. And if you look at the different performance tests for VR, obviously the Oculus compatibility tool was perfectly fine, green check marks down the row. Uh, and the Steam VR performance test listed it at 11 because of course it goes to 11, uh, but that is the maximum score you can get in the Steam VR performance test, the furthest right into the green bar of ready for VR. So you'll have no problems with any of the initial crop of VR titles that are coming out. And I believe into the, you know, well through 2016 uh, it, uh, renditions of VR titles and just PC gaming in general. If you wanna be ready for VR and you have the budget for this, this is clearly the system you should build but you definitely have to have the budget. If you missed our other VR uh, projects, we have a $900, $1,500 to complement the $2,500 system. And I think we've pretty much shown you what the best you can get for your Oculus Rift or HTC Vive this spring. Thanks guys. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash PCPer.